What's up, guys? Wanted to talk to you today about a scheme that East Carolina's implemented over the course of the last two weeks that's led to two very long Rodney Harris touchdown runs, and that play is called the pin pull sweep. The pin pull is a distant cousin of both the toss sweep and the outside zone. And its real strengths are that it creates great angles at the point of attack, and it gets big guys out on little guys on the perimeter. And while it's not a true edge play like the old sweep used to be, it does hit um, slanting defenses in places where they're most vulnerable, and that's off tackle in the C gap. So. What East Carolina got on Saturday against Navy is they are in a two-by-two two set with twins receivers to the field and a tight end and a flanker to the short side of the field. Navy lined up in what you would call an over defense, meaning they were going to set this three technique, this guy who's lined up outside of the tackle. He is going to – sometimes he lined up in a four-eye. It doesn't matter. He's a B-gap player and you're going to get uh, a situation where you get a great angle on a simple down block from this offensive tackle. So when we say pin, we're going to pin the front side of the play down, and that's exactly what East Carolina was able to do with this offensive tackle here. And then the most important block on this particular scheme is that your tight end can handle this C area player, this buff or this bandit, however you want to call it, especially if he is coming down into the C gap. So there is the pin portion of it. Um, and then what is happening right here is you're going to pull the front side guard out and he is going to block out the force defender. Sometimes that might be the safety, sometimes it might be the wheel backer scraping over the top, sometimes this bandit may be real out wide. And he's going to pull and block the first man that shows up outside of this tight end block right here. And in this particular case, they actually brought the corner. So this is a perfect call against corner blitz where this front side guard was out to take it. And in this play, the last two weeks that East Carolina run it, they blocked it a couple of ways with who's going to be the second puller. This fourth puller is what I call the alley puller, or the horse alley puller. Uh, puller. This guy is going to be the rat puller who is designed to really block this wheel backer right here, you know, it, or pulling up into the hole. And it could be the center or the guard. And what's happening between one of these two guys, they're making the decision on whether or not it's going to be a center pull or a guard pull based on the front they get. So J.D. actually lined this nose tackle, this A-gap nose tackle up into what you call a G technique or a two-eye, so they thought this guard would get him cut off on the back side, which he did. If this guy was lined up more to a shade, this center would block back and this guard would wrap around, but because he lined up a little bit closer to the guard this branch, in this particular instance, they're going to wrap this center around for the front side defender. And because that Z receiver was able to see a corner blitz, he's going to bypass that, know that they got him on that. He's going to be able to get to the, uh, to the safety on this particular look. And because Navy did some things where they had to bump this Mike linebacker because they're only playing two over two of this year or whatnot, the angles, they were able to dig this out some with the backside tackle and maybe hold this guy with the quarterback read on some of these looks. So we're going to, we're going to flip to the video and watch two instances. I'll explain the, the, the subtle differences in the play versus Navy and how that hit for a big touchdown out of the pistol. This back is going to run, and essentially he's going to follow this lead blocker this front side guard, if that front side guard kicks out, this play's getting enough hidden right behind him and the pulling center in this particular look. So this is the pin pull sweep as we take a look at it here on the video. So this is the scheme against Navy. You guys can see this is the formation. And like I said, the most important block that you get in this picture is him the tight end handle this C-gap player, okay? 
though this guy is really in kind of a four technique on that tackle, they've got it schemed up to where they know if this guy's the same up rushing, that this guy's probably going to be responsible for this B gap right here. So that tackle is just going to be able to wash him down. Then they're going to pull this front side guard out for whoever shows up in the alley. And because this guy's lined up pretty much head up on that guard, that guard's going to scoop him off. And then you're going to pull the center up and wrap for um, whoever shows up second in this C gap. And then we're going to zone shift on the backside. And this kind of gives you a picture of why this happened. Most important block on this is the tight end and the left tackle. Really good. They use the slant movement against them. Johnson sees that they're coming on the corner on this particular look. He shouldn't have to dig it out. This is a great job by this left guard, Avery Jones, in this coming out to the force alley. Johnson will now just climb. He will now either track this linebacker or work his way up to the safety. This guard is working. This center is now going to work for whichever one of those two show up first. The unblocked hat should be the backside inside linebacker, like we talked about. But, you know, he gets an angle, really terrific kick out, seal, beautiful picture, great job by the receiver right here, climbing up. And the backside inside linebacker can't make a hat. When you start getting, you know, that's why people blitz. Sometimes it'll hit like the stretch play or something like that in the mouth right here. The corner fire is the absolute worst call maybe to have on. Now, flipping to the play after the big turnover against USF, East Carolina is in a little bit different um, picture. And I'll be honest, I don't know what the crap South Florida is doing defensively on this particular look. They get caught um, in some type of issue where they're, they're not sound to the point of attack right here. So I'll try and get this as close as I can and pause it on the look, on the snap. And what East Carolina is going to do right now is their team, this tackle, if you guys ever played in the wing team, this tight end doesn't have a man over the top of him. So if his gap is not occupied, the old rule is gap down backward. So if there's nobody for him to gap down, for nobody for him to pin, he can now climb to the second level. And because this guy is now wide, this guard is going to end up kicking him out. They had a shade or a nose tackle this time, so now the center is going to block on, and you're going to end up pulling both guards instead of the front side guard and the center. So you still get the same concept of kick the alley, wrap the alley right here. They don't have a receiver out here this time, but – what is forced to do, they're in two tights. So it forced them to work the situation here. They've only got one linebacker up. This is obviously an alignment issue. Now, this was the first week that Donnie Kirkpatrick had shown 12 personnel, two tight ends. South Florida had some issues with it early, but you still get the same concept. What happens on this particular play is you get a sensational job by the tight end securing his gap and climbing, okay, you get a great kick out block by the front side guard. And normally when you have two linebackers in the box, this tight end would go to the backside backer and this guard, this other guard would pull for this guy. But because they've only got one linebacker in the box for some reason, and this tight end's able to climb, it's now gonna allow this backside guard to uh, climb up onto the force player and get a hat on a hat. And when we got linemen blocking safeties, guys, you got a real chance at big plays. So just in fast motion one time, kick, wrap, excellent job by the tight end. If you can get continued good stuff. And that, that is why um, philosophically you see East Carolina making some transitions here. As much odd front as people see, see uh, the, the modern day 20 personnel, meaning tight end kind of in the backfield stuff, is just not as good at blocking four techniques or three techniques or even five techniques as the old school kind of inline tight ends coming back. So about 10 years ago, you saw offenses shift to three wides, tight end in the backfield, because it's really getting us the four down defense. Now that you've got 
the three down defense really making a comeback with Navy, with South Florida, with whoever, you're starting to see teams have more success back with the old school tight end on the line of scrimmage. Really good tight end play on both of those clips. Really sensational job by the two pulling guards. So that is the pin pull sweep. Hope you enjoyed uh, this episode of Coach's Corner.